All right, this is the last footage from Renninger's. I'm starting with George the Antique Nomad's friend, Susan's booth, who had some amazing Christmas trees. So let's go see what else. All right, so I decided I would just do a voiceover for this video. I was looking at Susan's booth and this white and blue Christmas tree really stood out to me. She only had $95 on this. And if you guys don't know, some of these can be major bolos. If you see here, the same tree sold for $300 recently. Now, hers was missing, I think, one bird. Not a lot. I still think this would have sold for $250 or more. But... I was not ready to jump on that as of right now. So I did decide to leave it behind and somebody else did end up getting it. And I'm okay with that. She had a ton of really cool Christmas stuff as you see here. So you guys have to go see her next time. Now these look like horse hair to me, but they were ceramic. If anybody knows what those are, definitely let me know. Now, here at this booth, they had some interesting looking things, and it can definitely be overwhelming when you are at these antique shows or festivals because there's so much stuff. So, the method that I use is I just go until something catches my eye in one of the booths. I stop, and I told a few people who came with me this day, I don't stop at a lot of booths, but the ones I do stop at, I spend a lot of money. So I am turning over the brooches looking to see if they are marked. But if they are really big and have a lot of rhinestones in her statement, those could sell good as well. That one was a bird. As you guys know, animal brooches and jewelry sell very well. But I didn't see any here that were overly enticing to me. So I did decide to not get any of those but we are going to continue looking and just see what else we can see and with the little things you kind of have to look through and you do need to make sure it's okay to open the case because some vendors will allow you to open the case and others will not now these glass beads really stood out to me i actually thought dalton might wear them but he ended up not liking them so i asked how much and she came over to look at them and she ended up telling me $5. She told me they were marked sterling, which I did not even see. Now, that bracelet is so thin, it was a very easy to miss. And honestly, I should have seen that, but I did not. At $5, though, that was a really great price, and I did decide to get that. Now I'm looking because she told me it was marked, and I'm like, where is it? And it was actually on the side of the clasp there is where it said it that it was sterling. So... I ended up getting this one. This is really, really pretty. Dalton wouldn't wear it, so that one will be available for sale. And then I was looking at this one, but I think the beads on that one were plastic versus being glass. So I did decide to put that one back. Now, I'm just digging through the tray. I'm not sure what this was. It was kind of like a crown on a rock. I, I don't know. I don't know. You just have to look. You just have to look through. Again, make sure it's okay to open the cases if they are closed. And just look and see what catches your eye. And it's going to vary depending on the person. Now, these Lucite paperweight... And then you'll see in a second, I'm going to pick up also a Lucite ring holder. I did ask about those and... Unfortunately, she wanted $25 for them, which is a great price for a collector, but I think they probably would only sell for about $40 if I put them together, maybe $50, but $25 was a little bit higher than I wanted to pay. So typically for me, if they are way higher than me, I'm just going to put it back because I do not enjoy being load balled. So that is not something that I'm going to do to a vendor. Now, if it's close to what I'm willing to pay, then I will try to negotiate them down. And a lot of them, if you just kind of say nothing, will go down in their price as well without you having to even ask. Now, I did see this cloisonne egg and I was asking her how much and she said that it had a stand and there was no stand over with it. So she came and it actually was in the other, I, sh I was showing her where it was and it was actually in the other corner 
of the tray, but I believe she wanted 15 for that egg. And with it being smaller, and I just picked up three cloisonne eggs the day before, I did decide to leave that one there, but I did leave it with its stand. And she had a ton of really nice jewelry. So I am just looking, checking out, seeing what I can see. Looking for items that stand out to you. After you have got some knowledge, you're going to be able to pick out those items that will sell a little bit better. This one had a little piece of coral on it. That one was probably a Native American piece. But it was not overly flashy or big. And those are the pieces that tend to sell better and for a little bit more. Now, I have not seen any of the amber bluebirds like that. So I'm not sure how that would sell. And then this vase was really, really pretty and it was signed, but I think she wanted 10 or $15 for that. And if you missed it, there was a uranium glass there that would glow. Now that green paperweight was just a little bit plain. And this is a Fenton hobnail, but that's a smaller piece. And typically the bigger pieces sell better for me. Now, if you saw my haul video, you know I got this. This is a vintage 1991 Atlanta Braves Tomahawk pencil. I have this pencil on auction right now. I started at $9.99. I have a bid and it still has a week left. And with the Braves just winning the World Series and something being vintage to them, even though it's in poor condition, I'm still hoping it'll do pretty well. Now, with a lot of these booths, you kind of know when you go in them if you ask for price. I believe this is a moon and stars pattern. I did not ask a price on that from her. Not sure why, but I didn't. But then I saw this amazing Fenton custard glass. This is a diamond pattern. It was marked Fenton on the bottom. And it was a really pretty vase. She said 45 and I asked her if she would take 40 and she said yes. So I did get that and that did sell to a subscriber on the live that I did showing the haul. I've got to get that packed up for her. I have been really busy and am a little behind. So if you guys are waiting for invoices from me or anything like that, I promise I am not forgetting you. I am still working on it. It's been a little hectic around here. Now in that little case there was a Cadillac ring it was not sterling it's up on the top left there and I did not look it up I probably should have but with it not being sterling I wasn't sure exactly exactly how much that would sell for and again it's really hard when you have to ask to look at things in a case so I typically will look and kind of have an idea of what I'm wanting to see out of that case before I call the person over to open it up for me but don't be scared to ask them to open up the case and let you see some items because you might find something that is worth opening it up for and that is worth it for resale so as I looked down, I then saw these awesome Kachina salt and pepper set. I have never seen anything Kachina salt and pepper. So that was really cool. She said $10 for this set. I didn't even have to think twice. I probably got could have got it for a little bit cheaper, but I was so excited about it that I went ahead and bought it. I will probably be listing that for about $30. Now, these ladies also had tons of vintage hankies, so you can see I'm looking through. Unfortunately, most of theirs, I think she said, were between 3 and $5 each, which is not a bad price for a collector, but I typically like to get them for a dollar to $3.00. Now, there are some like the state map ones that I will pay more for. I paid it five and six dollars for those, but that's only because I have a history of selling them. I know they sell for anywhere between 25 and 40, so I'm okay paying up for those. Now, here I will tell you guys that I did not get anything in this booth, but they had some amazing pieces that I just wanted to take you guys along to see them. That covered cheese or butter dish was absolutely amazing in the uranium. And then they had some really, really nice head vases here. I don't remember the prices on them, but I do recall that most of it was a little bit too expensive for resale. And I did not end up purchasing anything. And there were some Roseville vases. Look at this cat. Like this cat is absolutely amazing. They had some, some really, really nice pieces. 
And uh, sometimes you go in and you just know that most likely you're not going to find anything for resale, that most of it is priced a little bit too high. I did ask them to look inside of here. I actually sold a brooch that looked just like this necklace pendant last week on Mercari for $92. He only wanted $20, but that piece was not marked. And he said he tested it, but I was kind of a little bit hesitant because I didn't see the marking. Without seeing the marking or having my own testing set, I am pretty leery about buying stuff that people tell me is sterling without knowing for sure. Because the value of something that's sterling is probably going to be about double to that of something that is not sterling. And actually, there's another piece that you're going to see here in a second that was really big. It was really nice. But again, it was not marked. So... All I have to say is just be leery of stuff that is not marked unless you have a testing kit and you're able to test it. This dragonfly piece was very, very pretty. It's got a pink stone there. I'm not sure if you can see it. I am going to pick it up here in a second. And this is something that definitely would sell. I do not remember if this piece was marked or not, but I believe he wanted $40 for it. I'm looking to see here. And again, I'm not seeing it. So without stuff being marked, it's just a little bit, a little bit of a kind of a gamble that you would be taking. And at $40, I think that's just a little too much, even though I absolutely love this dragonfly necklace. If you do not know yet, I love dragonflies. I will tell you dragonflies, butterflies, birds, any animals, honestly, when it comes to jewelry are pretty easy to keyword and you can find collectors. That was another piece that looked like it was an amethyst that was very, very nice. And I am just looking since he has the case open for me just to see if there was anything else I wanted. But at $20 base price for some of the smaller pieces, that was, again, just a little bit more than I wanted to pay. Now, at $15, I probably would have thought about it. However... As I said, I believe he said 40 for the dragonfly. He said 20 for the other piece. And at this point in the show, I had already spent quite a bit of money. So I wasn't looking to pick up anything unless I knew it was kind of a sure deal as far as making a profit on it. Now, here is the piece I was speaking about that's really big. And he actually wanted either 80 or 100 for this, but it was not marked. And when something is not marked, then I have a really hard time spending 80 or 100 dollars on it you can see here the back is shiny there is no mark at all on this indicating that it was sterling i do not believe the coral and turquoise were real either so i did decide to leave that there now there was the cute little santa with the sleigh that was annalee if you guys do not know that little cuckoo clock that was just on that bottom row was absolutely amazing those sell very well and that little rabbit was a tiffany rabbit but they had it at 60 and it only sells for about 75 dollars now here bags of jewelry like this are definitely something i like to dig through but dalton had his lollipop and was not being very patient there so i didn't dig through that jewelry now i love this water pitcher but i feel like this is a little more modern versus being a vintage piece but it was still a very very beautiful set as i said they had a ton of good things here just the prices were a little bit higher than what i would like to see for resale now this mushroom again 15 dollars is probably about what i could get so i'm in here more exploring which is good to do it's good to go in and learn and see stuff and just kind of familiar familiarize yourself with items that sell for good money in case you see them somewhere else i had a couple of items i saw places that i found in other booths for cheaper and i knew they were worth money because i had seen them at other booths and they were priced higher so definitely keep an eye out now this was really really nice jewelry in this case I did not even ask them to open it because I knew what their other prices were like. So I decided to move on. All right. So I am here with mom. Mom's pointing out pottery because mom knows I like the pottery. She really liked that little chicken creamer set, but it wasn't branded. And then this bowl was branded, but I actually couldn't read the name. It was pretty plain, but I actually liked it. 
and there were some nice pieces here. I can't remember how much she had them priced, but I feel like it was a little too much for resale. So I did decide to leave those there. Really, really nice pottery pieces. And it's funny because mom is now learning that I like the pottery pieces. And Dalton was looking at some toys. Now, here is some jewelry and a cute little vintage owl. This purse really caught my eye. And it was like banded shut. And I think that's because it probably doesn't stay shut. I think you could probably get like 30 maybe $35 for this. It's really cute velvet. And I wanted to know if it was name branded. So the seller's over there. I'm asking her about it and asking her if it opens. And it actually did open. She let me open it. And it was not branded. But she did want $20. And it would only go for about 30 to 35 So I did end up skipping that. There were some really nice baskets there as well. Those were priced a little high. Now, these frogs would probably sell for about 45 to 50 and I have sold some like that, but she wanted 25 or 30 on those, which was leaving not much room for profit. So now we are walking down the hill, and Dalton is running after me. He wanted to sit in those chairs, but he had dirty lollipop fingers, so I told him no. Now, that black painted toolware tray, those sell for about 30 35 These purses were really, really pretty. This one was priced at 25 I think you could probably get 35 to 40 but 25 or actually it might have been 32 was just a little bit more than I wanted to pay. Now, these are ones that I love to find. But again, that one probably go for about 50 So just a little bit higher than I am wanting to pay. Because I definitely like to at least triple my money if I'm buying individual items. They had some very, very interesting items here at this booth though. So I am just cruising to show you guys some really cool old knives. And I love these paintings or sketches. Those were really, really awesome. And they have the old typewriters, which I don't look at enough. I know I probably should. Harry Humstone does absolutely amazing flipping typewriters. Now, there was some amazing stuff at this booth. And like most, this one was not priced. So I am just looking here, checking out the different stuff. There were all of those pendants. And there was a lot of nice glass here as well really really nice glass if you guys see those vases in the background now this these are some belt buckles i think he had 15 to 20 so most of this stuff was unfortunately priced a little too high for resale but i want to show you guys because there is just some really really amazing stuff at this booth i'm navigating around mom and dalton here and it's so crazy how much stuff is here. I didn't look at that turquoise phone, and I probably should have. That probably had some good resale value, and I thought those surfboards were cool. Now, that little elephant, I think he wanted 20 or 34 And then down here, I love this fused glass bowl. But again, once you ask a few prices at a lot of these booths, you kind of get the feeling whether or not you're going to be able to do anything with it. But his prices were a little too high but i was enjoying for sure all of the stuff this murano vase is absolutely amazing it does have the original murano sticker on it i also saw this cloisonne vase now this murano vase was laying down <laughs> which is smart on the hill um dalton is talking to me now I asked about this vase and he wanted 75 for it. You probably could get 150, maybe 200. It was a really cool vase and it still had the original sticker, but I just was not wanting to spend $75 on one item as I had already spent quite a bit of money, but that was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful Murano vase. Cute little Chihuahua too. Now like this amber, I think that was like a uh, crawfish or something, but that was priced at 35 Now, I'm showing you guys this really cool dolphin table base just because, you know, I love dolphins. All right, this is my kind of booth, guys. This is almost all linens. So check out all of these different linens. There's some really, really cool stuff. I did pick these up, these Scotty Dog napkins. There were four for $5. I did list them individually. So I'm about $1.25 into each. So that was really, really cool. And then there were so many really, really nice linens. This is the stuff that I definitely love. 
and she had it all pressed and displayed so nicely. This was an absolutely amazing booth. Beautiful, beautiful vintage embroidered little girls dresses and table runner. There was just some amazing, amazing stuff here. Now I was kind of confused because behind this box, it says handkerchiefs price a dollar, but then they were actually all individually priced. So I was hoping they were on sale and I had picked a few out and then I asked her after the fact just to make sure because it was really confusing the handkerchiefs the dollar sign behind and she said they were all individually priced so I picked a lot out I wanted you guys to see what I picked though and some I did keep now this is a really pretty blue floral and I do go for both big and bold and some of the small dainty flowers like this one here was very, very pretty. It had a butterfly in addition to the flowers and the really pretty pale pink for $2. I did end up keeping some, but I do typically like to only pay about a dollar unless it's something that really stands out. So I was asking her there and she was telling me, no, they were individually priced. So I don't see why the price of handkerchiefs for a dollar was behind them, but that's okay. We kept looking and just kept in mind that they were each priced individually versus just a dollar each. Sorry, my voice is cracking. I just had my members live for two and a half hours. So my voice is kind of tired and I had to finish this voice over. That's why the video is coming out so late tonight too as well. So you guys know, I know it's not too late for you West Coast people. Now the little heart one was really pretty. I'm not sure if this Puerto Rico is a Ranshaw one and I didn't look it up, but it was priced $8. So I did decide to leave it there. That one might have been worth it though. And you are going to see here in a second. This is actually the first time that I found a Ranshaw in the wild. There was another dollar one and this really pretty purple one. I believe that one actually just sold tonight for $12. And here's the Ranshaw Kansas. So this was actually the first time that I had found one in the wild. And what I'm doing is searching my inventory. I do have some Ranshaw left, but I think I have 10 left out of 50. And I was just checking to see if the Kansas one had sold and it did. And the lowest I sold them for was about $21. Quite a few sold for $40. So I did decide to go ahead and pick up that Kansas one. Now, I did straighten everything back up and I did put back some, but here are the ones that I decided to get. I believe I spent $10 there in total. So, pretty good pickups. Now, we are at another booth. These little cloisonné pieces were, I believe, $5 each. And I had just gotten such amazing bigger cloisonné pieces the day before that I was kind of spoiled. So, I did decide to leave those behind. And I wasn't overly impressed with that paperweight. I have gotten so many paperweights now. I am pretty picky when it comes to the paperweight. I really like the Millefiori flowers and I like the iridescence. And those were just kind of a little bit more plain to me. So we are looking at their tables just to see what we can find. You do have to, again, look around. You have to dig a little bit in order to find some good stuff. But that was a really cool uranium tray on the end. And here they had some patches. All of those vintage perfumes were a dollar, but I honestly did not look through them. And I was looking through the jewelry. This little heart locket was absolutely adorable. I have been doing quite a bit more jewelry just because of the fact that it takes less space and you can find some really high dollar jewelry you guys will see coming up soon. I actually declined a $200 offer tonight. Now this little trinket box with the inlay was really pretty and so I held on to that and then there was also another piece you will see me find here and... I ended up getting them two for $5. I think I'm going to pick it up here in a moment. I think it was a little bear. It was like a Christmas pen. I don't know where it is. It's here somewhere. We will find it. But I, I wanted to show you guys too that Lucite toilet seat. I have not looked it up, but I bet money that Lucite toilet seat with the ducks would, would definitely sell. 
And I had asked her how much and she told me the two for five. So I was trying to find my second piece. That flamingo was cute, but it actually felt pretty cheap. But this here, this is what I ended up getting. It was a rabbit with a carrot and that was actually marked. So I did end up getting those two for $5 from her. And I like the whole two for five, but look at this booth. This is even better. These were three for 10 or $4 a piece. Now you do have to be careful because a lot of this is gonna be costume jewelry, but a lot of costume jewelry you can get $20 a piece for. So if you can get it for three and sell it for 20, you know, you're about six times your money, six to seven, and that is not too bad. So I definitely was looking through these. I loved this purse, but I think it was $30, which was a little more than I wanted to pay. But with so many three for 10 trays, I figured I could definitely look up and find at least three so we've got to look and you know once i find one i've got to find two more because i don't want to pay four when i can get them three for ten and look at this mermaid pen absolutely amazing like folk art mermaid beautiful so the mermaid is in my hand and we are going to see if we can find two more things so we are looking through all of their trays and there are some good pieces, but I really want stuff that stands out and I think I can keyword well. And I'm also looking for marked. Now I did get the starfish. This one was marked and I do not remember the brand, but I did end up picking that up because it was marked. And I think I put it down, picked it up, put it down, picked it up. But I think I ended up in the end, I, I, I do believe I got that starfish. And then over here i saw the hematite butterfly necklace and i almost got that as my third piece but i decided that i would look and see what else i could find and it takes a lot of looking when you have so many trays and trays of jewelry in front of you but the more you sell i think the more familiar you get with jewelry so that you can kind of pick out pieces that you know you can keyword and sell well and that's really the key is knowing how you're going to describe the pieces of jewelry that you get and what keywords you will use to help buyers find your items because that's what helps them to sell now, right now I do just have the two pieces, so I am looking for a third. And now this flower brooch was really, really pretty. So that made my third and that is all. I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you guys tomorrow with another video. I really do appreciate all of the birthday wishes. I hope you guys have a great night and a great weekend. I will see you tomorrow.